Hello guys and welcome to another video. What we have on the workbench uh, today is um, an MSX machine from 1983, a classic MSX uh, model by Toshiba, um, the HX10. It is indeed a very popular model, one of the members of the uh, MSX1 um, series, uh, produced from 1983 to 1985 before MSX2 series come out in the markets. The typical cartridge slot is on the right um, top uh, corner. Colorful keys, uh, big cursor keys. That was typical and pretty much a standard for all the um, MSX1 family computers. The keyboard looks great and it feels great and it's a quality keyboard and as a matter of fact the whole construction is so great and so robust like all MSX1 uh, series computers is based around the Zilog Z80 CPU and like the majority of those machines um, it has 64 kilobytes of RAM 32 kilobytes of ROM um, TMS99 series uh, video graphics chip and for the sound it uses a Yamaha sound chip very famous and very reliable. Now for this particular machine I have no idea if it works or not. It's gonna be the first time we'll try to power it up today here together um, and if there's anything wrong we can maybe try to uh, <coughs> narrow down um, the problem and uh, check if we can fix it. But before we do all that let's take a look around it on the back side the expansion bath still with the cover and the screws like it has never been used before uh, very high quality um, connector I can tell audio video RF output for the television and the cassette recorder classic DIN type um, socket there and of course the power cord is hardwired inside the computer that was another standard solution chosen for the MSX machines by all the manufacturers. On the right side, joystick 1 and 2 and the printer port, again, high quality connector there. I guess it's a Centronics um, compatible port. On the other side we have the on-off switch on the left side. Overall it looks like it is in very good shape and it comes with an, uh, a serial number quite early a serial number if I may say I couldn't wait uh, longer so I tried to power it up so the LED comes up um, I have uh, put the composite and the TV RF cable as well um, and now the moment of truth and the truth is that we have nothing on our screen the worst thing is that we can see that there's no signal message pops up uh, which means that nothing triggers the video output that's bad news for now and of course uh, we need to investigate further I was trying to find information over the internet before I can even uh, put my hands on it and uh, I found out that for the most part uh, CPU fails which is the Z80 sometimes it might be a bad RAM chip or more and uh, in some other cases it might be the ROM chip that fails now I'm trying to switch to the RF um, signal channel 36 and test the um, output again but nothing comes up so uh, it's dead uh, It's completely dead nothing uh, comes on the screen on uh, composite nothing comes up on the uh, RF tuner now just because the power LED comes up doesn't mean that the voltages inside the machine are fine so the first thing to do uh, by the time um, I will open the machine is to check the voltages and I hope everything is alright and then we can uh, start um, eliminating factors around the problem and now that I think of it I have another shot um, another try with the cartridge maybe if not all the RAM has failed altogether 
um, we can uh, see something um, on the screen if we can use a cartridge which can uh, work in, uh, as an independent ROM and maybe, I don't know, guessing could be on our screen but nothing happens and so that was the last thing I could uh, think of and uh, try and so eventually it looks like we have an operation to perform again today so let's uh, have a look and see what this guy has under the hood one little surprise that little details that do make the difference every screw from the bottom part has a washer uh, nice very nice job uh, so this is how it looks under the hood and let's take a look around so we have three four five basic chips four of them are in sockets uh, down below we can see the Yamaha uh, sound generator chip in the middle we can see the Toshiba um, ULA let's call it ULA uh, chip and on top we can see the Z80A by Sharp and right there in the middle we can see the ROM and on the side here without any markings no it's a heatsink on top uh, it's the TMS um, video chip for the output as you can see the ROM um, is not an EEPROM so there is no glass in the middle it's the factory ROM and around uh, this area you can find um, glue ch uh, logic chips and just below the uh, video chip is the whole array of the RAM chips this is the transformer um, this module is a separate module probably uh, takes care of the video signal and as I'm taking this look around I'm also touching uh, the chips to check any unusual high temperature which is uh, not the case uh, I think it's normal uh, it's just a bit hot so I cannot tell which one is um, faulty uh, by the temperature so I have to um, find another way to investigate and spot the faulty part here is the uh, keyboard connector no membranes or anything pure cables and sockets um, again let me check the temperature as it is um, powered on all this time and I cannot see that uh, there is something um, hot and extremely hot or something to indicate a problem I have found a very useful sticker on the transformer which uh, indicates the right voltages um, so I checked that and it's okay um, so that's good I have removed the Z80 I do not believe it's the suspect number one but I have re removed the um, uh, CPU in order to put a new one and play a bit with chances because I thought it would be better to start uh, with um, the chips that have sockets so um, I will put a new Z80 uh, in the place of the previous one uh, I have found two in my um, spares and um, let's see what happens so test one has failed um, computer is dead uh, second CPU has also failed and now I'll be looking around for an EEPROM to uh, replace the ROM I think statistically speaking it is the second uh, most likely chip to fail prone to failure and so I went to this wonderful uh, great um, FTP like um, link I will put the link down below uh, the guys from Netherlands great job who have placed all the um, MSX uh, useful binary files and uh, ROM files and several other things about the MSX uh, machines um, so that you can get them 
for free and um, now I'm going to download the system ROMs um, I think uh, all the well-known uh, models and popular models will be uh, can be found there so I am downloading the system ROM zip and I will check the contents in a while I'm guessing the Toshiba 8x10 ROM uh, basic ROM uh, will be there um, in the contents and then I can uh, uh, burn up the image the binary uh, image um, on this EEPROM and uh, replace the the one that is in the machine because probably uh, this is the one uh, that gives me trouble so what we have as contents is a folder of extensions a folder for the list of the machines and miscellaneous files so, and indeed we have all the manufacturers uh, folders in here L let me scroll down to Toshiba and then we can find the HX10 basic BIOS ROM that's it and let me check the size of the file which is indeed 32k so that's the one we need and I'm going to burn this ROM onto the EEPROM the 32k EEPROM I have found in my spares but first I need to check the ROM that was uh, removed from the machine this factory ROM is a Fujitsu type of uh, ROM and um, check the contents with the help of my precious um, EEPROM programmer here because I'm really curious to see if this is the faulty chip and what are, are the contents of it and then compare it with a ROM file that I have downloaded and uh, as comes as a big surprise it's all FFFF which means the um, ROM from the machine is blank it is empty I cannot believe it I haven't seen this uh, never before now I have the ROM uh, loaded uh, the file that I have downloaded and the right one and um, I'm checking uh, all the way down to the last addresses uh, the contents and it looks okay you can even tell right here it's the Microsoft logo and copyright message somewhere around here so I think the downloaded um, image the ROM image uh, is okay and it looks okay so I'm going to burn this onto the um, 32k EEPROM that I have found in my spares and uh, put it in the place of the old one and see what happens if this is it then we are done um, the only thing that I couldn't do anything about uh, would be if the ULA the Toshiba uh, chip uh, would be damaged or faulty so we have the um, um, EEPROM in place um, and uh, we're going to conduct our test the sharp uh, Z80 is back into place the RAM chips are not so um, hot to indicate that something wrong with them and so crossing fingers and going for the test with the new EEPROM with uh, the burned image downloaded and uh, put in the socket and hopefully this will be our last test and the um, Toshiba HX10 will be flying again today on the other hand it is really interesting and I need to check that um, how is it possible the factory ROM to be empty erased and uh, blank I don't know I haven't seen this before but now it is time for our test crossing fingers here and I'm powering up the machine oh boy oh boy we made it we made it we made it it works it works just fine and it's crystal clear uh, 28815 bytes free wow wow that was it the EEPROM the ROM was faulty in fact the ROM was faulty and empty wow that's a thrilling moment exciting moment as always one more retro system is saved and I'm pretty happy and pleased uh, again uh, like I said I'm, I'm, I'm already 
pleased and happy, but I need to investigate how this happens. It's interesting from the technical point of view how the factory ROM has been erased somehow and um, it, it was empty and uh, blank. Anyways, I'm happy. I'm going to put a sticker over here to avoid any um, any loss of information due to light. I don't believe uh, it is needed, but I will put a sticker on top of the EEPROM and then call it a wrap for today. Wow, that's great. Feels great because it's a wonderful machine after all. And uh, now, as I usually do, I'm going to celebrate the moment with a game. The cartridge I've been testing before, I'm going to power up the machine and see that it works just fine and so I can call it a wrap um, put the video together and then I can uh, give myself some <laughs> relaxing and happy moments with um, this game uh, it feels great every time And so, by the end of the day, we have a working HX10 Toshiba MSX machine from 1983. And it, it is great. I put a couple of little heat sinks on top of the CPU and the video uh, generator chip. And um, I like this machine very much. I like Japanese um, um, quality, um, the keyboard, the case. Uh, the electronics, the PCB materials used, uh, the power supply, everything is of high quality. And I really like the MSX machines. You have found the special list. I keep all my collections uh, items uh, presented. And um, yeah, I'm happy and pleased. Today's video uh, is over. And thank you very much for watching. I'll be catching you soon with another project, another restoration, modification, review, uh, repair, or whatever, um, we need to go back in time and do just to keep alive all these memories and this hardware. I really hope you have found this entertaining and useful, or at least informative, and uh, if you did like it, Please subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up, and I'll be catching you soon with another video, I promise. Um, thanks, bye for now.